disclaimer, I do not own any rights to any content, videos, research, music, unless it is of my own creation. Everything is for entertainment and commentary purposes. All information is of my own opinion or are alleged until factual evidence has been presented. Cue the music. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode of All Things CC. Here's my take. We are at the final installment of the series, Who the F Did I Marry TikTok series. These are the final parts, 41 through 50. I am not about to be too long in this introduction. So without further ado, let's get into it. And my final thoughts will be at the end of this. In. Part 41, who the fuck did I marry? So this is a continuation of my conversation with Chris, which will then lead into some other stuff. So um, Chris has confirmed that he has not spoken to Legion um, since 2015. So now we know that the phone calls that Legion was having every morning on the phone with Chris when we were you know, getting ready to go to work, the phone calls were fake. I demonstrated in the last video how I think he, you know, how he was doing those phone calls. Um, Cause he would relay messages from me to whoever was on the phone. So Chris and I also then talked about their parents. So if you remember in the beginning, I told you from the get go, this man was, you know, very respectful of law enforcement because his dad was a retired police, Philadelphia police officer. The mom was a retired teacher. And so he had the utmost respect for law enforcement. That's what he used to always say. Because again, there's, there's a lot that he lied about. So I'm trying to only highlight the big things because truthfully, um, it got to a point where when he would say that as a VP in his company, he had a meeting with the local sheriff. Child, we know we know that's a lie. So I don't even need to go into detail about that because again, why? So I told Chris what Legion said about their dad being a retired police officer. Um, and I was explaining how he said the mom was a retired teacher. So Chris listened again very gracious very nice guy he listened and he was like so are you ready for me to tell you what's true and what's not um and at this point i was already convinced i was going to be drinking heavily that night after this phone call so i was like go ahead all right so here's what legion said legion said my dad was a retired police officer with philadelphia pd when he retired he and my mom moved to augusta i was there for high school and um, they started a church. He took me to that church in Augusta and show, and you know showed me where the church that they started. The truth. Dad, according to Chris, their dad was nowhere near the church. That man ain't go to church on Easter. He ain't go to church on Christmas. He was like, my dad ain't go to, he ain't stepped foot in the church since the day he got married. That was the last time he went to church. He didn't have nothing to do with church. He said um, that their father was the furthest thing from a pastor. And he was like, I love my dad, but that man drank, smoked, and nah, he, he was not a pastor. The mom was not a retired teacher. She did substitute teach at one point, but she was not a retired teacher. Um, the dad was a truck driver. And not only was the dad a truck driver, at one point, he was a correctional officer. And so I said to Chris, I was like, yeah, I, was, I said, I had no idea, of course. <laughs> I had no idea. So now we know the truth. Parent, the, the dad was never in law enforcement. Um, and I'm not knocking correction officers. I'm just, I want to make very clear because I know that sometimes people that work in law enforcement feel like, look, when I'm out there patrolling, that is not the same as being 
um, a correction officer and correction officers may feel the same. So I just want to give the distinction between the two. So the dad at one point was a correction officer. However, his primary career was a truck driver. And so um, the dad would do long hauls. So Chris is explaining, no, he, 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 man, he was like, now that's funny. He said, if you knew our dad, you would understand how funny that is to even insinuate that he was a, that he was a pastor. And so I told him about the church that we went to. He was like, oh, okay. So he took you to a church in Augusta and told you that that was our parents' church. He was like, now our mom used to go to church, you know, every now and then. But he said, our dad ain't been to church since the day he married mom. <laughs> so the church that Legion took me to and said that his parents started that church, that, that was not true. So he just took me on a field trip for nothing, basically. So I told him about the weekend, because I did tell Chris where I worked. And that is when Chris said to me, because at the time I worked in a law enforcement agency and he said to me, now, how does that work? He said, because Legion, you know, he done been in trouble a few times. And I was like, what do you mean? Because I had not yet gone online into the court system to see what type of trouble he's been in. And so he explained to me, he was like, just run his, run his criminal history and you'll see it for yourself. He said, because I don't know all the charges, but run his criminal history. I said, okay. He gave me some homework. I'll run his criminal history. So again, he cleared up a lot of stuff in regards to the family dynamics. He did explain to me that, yes, he does have a daughter. Um, he and his ex-wife are divorced. And I said, well, Legion would... Legion would talk about his the niece, meaning Chris's daughter, and would send her stuff for her birthday. And he was like, I'm he said, I'm almost positive my brother never sent anything for my daughter's birthday. And I explained to him, I said, Isn't your daughter's name Egypt? He said, No. Who the hell is Egypt? <laughs> And I said, I was told that was your daughter's name. That's the reason why I'm telling, I'm saying the name on here because obviously we're about to confirm that's not the daughter. So I said, I was told that's your daughter's name. I said, I, I went with him to Rack Room Shoes and bought shoes for what I was told was your daughter. And she lived in St. Louis with your ex-wife. He said, no. He said, my daughter and my ex-wife do not live in St. Louis. He said, I don't know who Egypt is. Um, he was like, are you sure it wasn't for a woman? And I said, well, it was kids' shoes. And he was like, no. He said, and I told him, I said, I went to the UPS store. I mailed it. And, it, you know, I, I they printed the label with the girl's name on it. And I'm thinking this whole time, it's Legion's niece. Chris is like, I don't know who that is. That's not even the name of one of our cousins. So I have no idea, ladies and gentlemen, who my ex-husband was buying girl shoes for and had me sending them telling me it's for his niece. I have no idea. So Chris is like, yeah, he, 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 he finally said to me the same thing the ex-wife said, which is, pretty much whatever he told you is a lie and I was and I I'm, I'm being honest with you guys it is very hard to comprehend that everything is a lie like there has to be something that's true I'm like how was he paying if he wasn't working at the condiment company or he got fired from the condiment company, how was he still paying the bills? Keep in mind, we never joined our accounts. He wanted to, but we never did because he wouldn't show me <laughs> the offshore, the savings account, which of course never existed. So I'm just trying to figure out, like I know that I saw his checking account. I know that I saw his savings account and he had money in there. 
something had to be true. Something had to be true. And Chris was like, no. He said, it sounds like everything my brother said, um, everything that he told you was made up. He said, those phone calls were definitely made up. He said, I don't know who Egypt is. That's not any family member of ours. Um, I don't know who Shantae is. We don't have a sister. Um, he said, we don't have half brothers. He was like, I'm telling you who the family members are. He said, I am so sorry that my brother put you through this. So now let's go into the next part. Part 42, who the fuck did I marry? So I finished going through the book bag, still July of 2021. I finished going through the book bag. Um, there were some other folders with papers in there. He had left the work phone, work phone. What I actually found out was that it was not a work phone. It was simply a secondary personal phone. He told me it was a work phone. I thought that the company was paying for the work phone. That's what I thought. No, because I found um, receipts where basically, and I didn't know this, ladies and gentlemen, I had no idea, but I found receipts where he it was a prepaid phone and he's paying to add minutes to it so it's just receipts of you know you you added minutes to the phone on this date you added minutes on that date so the the uh work phone whole thing that was a bold-faced lie obviously it was a lie because as we now know he was a forklift loader so the work phone that he's been walking around with was really just a secondary phone he had left the phone. He took his personal phone, meaning the, the main phone, I should say, but the work phone, he left. So I'm going through the work phone, just try, trying to find some sort of answer. Now what is really burning in my mind is how, how is it that he had all this money in the accounts? But again, the last time I saw him, he's living in his car. Like the math is not mathing. I go into not just the photos of the work phone. I go into the deleted folder. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to go through somebody's phone, which I will never do again, but if you're going to go through the phone, don't just go through the text messages and the pictures. Go into the deleted folder because sometimes you find a gold mine. In this case, I went into the deleted folder of the pictures in the work phone i keep saying work phones because again this is just a secondary phone it is deactivated there's no minutes on it so i go into the deleted pictures and what i see is a is what looks like a screenshot of his checking account the one that i saw with the available balance then there's another photo of the screenshot of the savings that he showed me now, one of two things it could be. Either one, it's not real and it was pulled offline, or two, he took a screenshot of his own account and saved the photos. So this is when I got introduced to reverse Google, Im Google image search. I did a reverse Google Im image search. Sure enough, as you probably have figured out, some of you, because I read it in the comments, what he showed me when he turned his phone around showing me his available um, checking account balance was nothing more than a screenshot that he had found on Google. When he showed me his savings, turned the phone around, because remember, I, I demonstrated for y'all how he was, and then, you know, showed it, turned it around and showed it to me as if he was signing in. When he did that, he was, he was simply showing me a screenshot that he had taken from Google Images. Because when I did a reverse Google Im image search with those two photos, the checking and the savings, it came right up. It was nothing more than just Google Images. In my phone, I still had, I didn't even need this because again, I already knew that he was not a VP regional manager, but still for shits and giggles, I did a reverse image search of the charcoal BMW. Remember I told y'all he had sent me pictures of the company car. Nothing more than a screenshot he had taken off of Google images. 
the house that he showed me that he had in San Diego, Google Images. So, what we can now confirm is anything he showed me when he's turning his phone around is nothing more than an image from Google Images at this point. The checking account, the savings account, Google Images. The house, Google Images. The company car, the BM, that charcoal gray BMW 5 Series, Google Images. So, at this point, I realize, okay, nothing, nothing is real. Um, and I wasn't so much in a rage, to be honest with you. I wasn't in a rage then and there. As much as it was, I really truly had a moment where I said to myself, oh my God, what the fuck have I let in my life? Like, this is not even human at this point. That's really how it felt. Like, again, as someone who, um, I, you know, I studied psychology, but I didn't, I didn't graduate with a psychology degree. However, I have never dealt with a pathological liar. I have studied about them, but I have never come into contact with a pathological liar. Because to a compulsive liar... If you ask them, man, why did you lie to me? They probably are going to have a reason. Pathological liars don't have a reason. Like, there's, and there's no limit to the lie. So, I have now confirmed that at least 70% of everything that I thought I knew is now absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. So, in between all of this, I get a phone call from the aunt in Augusta. The aunt in Augusta who Chris has confirmed is the mother's best friend. She is not their mother's sister or dad's sister. She's the best friend of the deceased mom. She calls me and this is the one I have met. This is the one that Chris was like, I don't trust that hoe, you know, anyway. Um, so she called because she wanted to know what happened. She wasn't trying to be nosy or messy or anything like that. She's just trying to find out what happened because apparently Legion is trying to come stay with her. So she asked me, sweet lady, but she said, you know, what what happened with you with you guys? She's and I and I told her we're getting a divorce. Um I said because he he lied to me. A lot. He lied to me a lot. Um and so what breaks my heart about the conversation with her is that she said, so whatever happened to the baby? Mind you, we went to Augusta, told her I was pregnant. I thought he told her that I had had a miscarriage. He didn't. He never told this woman I had a miscarriage. So she informs me, this is what she tells me. So now we're confirming something else. She tells me, that on at least five times while I'm at work, Legion was driving to Augusta and telling her that he was going to visit the church of where the parents of allegedly start the church that the parents started. And I was like, what do you mean he went to Augusta? She said, I've seen him like four or five times. He's come down here. And each time I've asked him to bring the baby. And I said, what baby? And she said, the, the baby that y'all had, he told me that you all, that y'all had a baby boy. And I said, no, ma'am. I said, I had a miscarriage in June of 2020. And she said, oh my God. Oh, you know, she was, she was doing that whole thing. Um, she said this whole time he told me that y'all had had a son in January and I have been asking him for pictures I have been asking him to bring both of you down here so I could meet him and he always had an excuse as to why he wouldn't bring the baby and the last time he was in Augusta he said that he was leaving you and he was taking the baby with him and that you were at work I am not making this up that is what that woman told me 
And I just was like, no, ma'am, none of that is true. There is no baby. Um, I said, I had no idea he was going to Augusta. Next. Part 43, who the fuck did I marry? So after the conversation with the aunt, again, she's telling me that Legion has been keeping up this lie that we had a son. I have let her know, no, ma'am, there was no baby. We did not have a baby. Um, and I said, I'm so, I thought that he told you. And she said, he's told a few people that you all had a baby. And she said, because I know some people were sending, were, were trying to send a gift to celebrate the birth. I ain't know anything about that. Didn't know anything about that. So she said, he's trying to come stay with me. She said, but I don't think I, I want him to, again, she's an older lady. She was like, I don't think I want him to come here because I don't really want to get involved with um, his divorce again. And I said, what do you mean again? I said, are you talking about the previous wife? And I said the previous ex-wife's name. She said, I don't know who that is. I'm talking about Latoya, La Latanya, that one, the first one. And I said, well, what happened? Do y'all remember I said in my previous uh, video that I found, I read their divorce records. He had filed for divorce and they had a temporary protection order against each other. I said that. So now the aunt is on the phone saying that she had to go to court and testify on Legion's behalf in regards to the temporary protective order. And I was like, well, what happened? She said they she said they got into a fight with each other. And she slapped him. And I said, well, do you know why they got into a fight? And she said, yeah, apparently he had lied to the wife. And it was something major. And they got into a physical fight. And, that, and she said that woman almost beat his behind. And so he asked the court for a temporary protect, protective order. So now I'm just getting the backstory on how that TPO was even, even came into play. So I told her, I said, you know, Miss Christy, we'll call her. I said, you don't have to worry about that. I said, we're not, um, he's already signed the paperwork. We're not fighting. I'm not, I'm, I don't have it in me. I don't. So I said, I'm not going to tell you not, not to have certain people in your home. But I am going to tell you that I'm just barely kind of discovering exactly what the lies are in regards to Legion. So if you feel comfortable having him in your home, then do it. I said, but I am going forward with this divorce. And once the divorce is final, I will have nothing to do with him. And uh, I said, and I'm so sorry, you know, that he lied to you. Um and kind of pulled at your heartstrings in regards to a baby. I said, there is no baby. So she says, so y'all are really getting a divorce? I said, and I didn't want to cuss to the older ladies, but I said, yes, ma'am, we are, we are. Um, and so we get off the phone. Um, also during this time, Legion would call me every now and then. Legion had no idea. I've spoken to his ex-wife. I've spoken to his brother. I've spoken to his female cousin. He had no idea. I have now, if we want to go through real quick and talk about what we can confirm. We can confirm that um, there is no sister. We already knew there was no baby. There was no um, VP job. Again, he was, he was a temp. And apparently he was making decent money. So what I believe, and this is just what I think off of putting pieces together. I think that he made enough money to pay the household bills because it wasn't as if the household bills were so expensive. He made enough money to live on his own. Um, but instead of him living on his own, he's living with me. So... We can also confirm that when he told me that he was paying his car off and he called the dealership and paid his car off, we can confirm that that's a lie. That story will come up later on. So pretty much at this point, the only thing I know to be true, his name, 
his date of birth, the secondary social security number that was on my background check, um, and that he has two brothers and the parents are deceased. At this point in time of July, 2021, that is all I can, that's all that I was able to confirm that to be true. So later on, Legion calls me. He calls me because he wants some money. He want he just needs a little bit of money to hold him over till payday. And so he we're on the phone. The call again, I was recording all my calls at the time. We're on the phone and I just and I finally kind of confronted him, number one, about having a twin. That's when he tells me, you know, I, I, I don't know why I lied, but I don't really talk about him. Number two, I asked him about, I asked him why did he get fired from the condiment company? His story is that he got fired because he had helped a truck driver and he was not supposed to. I know it's a lie. Y'all don't even have to tell me. I know it's a lie. Um, number three, I asked him, why did you tell your aunt that we had a baby? He claims he never told her that and that she's old and she didn't know what she was talking about. So then I asked him if he was ever in trouble where he's been arrested. And he said, yeah, I've been arrested as a juvenile, but my father had my record expunged. I said, were you ever arrested as an adult? He said, no, nah, I never been arrested as an adult. I said, so you never went to weekend jail? He said, no, I don't even know what that is. So he doesn't know what weekend jail is. So that's, that's his story. And so he was, still li he was still standing by the lies he told me. So finally, I just asked him, and this is where I... I let me just say it. I asked him, why the hell did you even marry me? Like, why? Why did you even marry me? Because you easily could have just stayed dating or been the boyfriend or just moved on, moved on with your life. Like, you didn't have to marry me. You didn't have to pull me in into a marriage and make me think that this is what you wanted. This is what he said to me on that phone call. He said, I had to marry you. And I was like, no, you didn't. He said, yes, I did. He said, I knew full well from day one that there was no way you were going to stay my girlfriend for longer than a year. He said, I knew it. He said, I knew in order to keep you, I was going to have to marry you. Y'all, my jaw hit the ground. I could not believe he said that. And he said it's so matter of fact. And I was like, that is the most fucked up thing you could ever Part 44. Who the fuck did I marry? The videos that you saw earlier were filmed earlier today. Um, and yes, I'm aware. It was brought to my attention. Um, I had to make a decision whether or not to finish, keep my word, or stop, disappear. <laughs> I mean, disappear. Um, okay. Let's finish. So, first of all, let me say this. It is not easy telling this story. It is, it's entertaining I know it's gone viral, um, but it is not easy telling this story. I made a decision to tell the story. I made a decision to share my story, what I went through in hopes that it helps just one person. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you all, it is not easy telling this story, to relive it to face certain things out loud that I had to face internally. Just want to say that. So I, I will push forward to finish, 
But today got to me. The toll of this got to me today. So I know that you all are like, we're waiting on the next part. We're waiting on the next part. I appreciate that. And I get it because if I was in those shoes, I would be waiting too and be like, where is it? So I understand that. Um, but the toll was real today. All right. So with that being said, um, we are still in July of 2021. Um, I had talked to the brother, Chris, I had talked to the aunt I talked to um, all these people, and now was the time where I again I had saw the receipts for the weekend jail type thing. Um, so I went ahead and did a search for his criminal history. I ran his criminal history. I did that on my own at home um, with my money. So this was not. I think someone had asked if I did anything with my job. No, I did not. I know I know better. Um, so I ran a criminal history or I paid for a criminal background report. For him to say that he appreciates law enforcement so much, it was obviously a lie. Because the criminal history showed that he had been arrested for criminal trespassing he had been arrested for like suspended license um suspended registration but the big thing was impersonating an officer if you don't know anything about impersonating an officer it is a felony period point blank as sure as Peachtree runs from bankhead to buckhead it is a felony so seeing that Seeing what court it was in, um, I did another open records request for the incident report. I wanted to know exactly what the circumstances were, especially given the fact that I worked in law enforcement at the time. What were the circumstances as to how he was arrested for impersonating an officer? So I did an open records request. I got um, the incident report and... I'm tired of saying my jaw hit the floor, but on this one, my jaw hit the fucking floor. I respect law enforcement. Again, I I was working in an agency um, with a lot of great men and women. Basically, what the incident report, and I'm paraphrasing it because I don't have it sitting in front of me. Basically, what the incident report shows is that he pretended to be an officer using a badge i later found out it was the badge that his dad had as a former correction officer same last name so he was pretending to be um, a police officer at an apartment complex on the south side of atlanta and proceeded to tell people that he was an investigator and he was looking for drugs he also proceeded to try to uh, pat down someone and then also proceeded to try to go into a woman's apartment and do a search. This is in the incident report. So naturally, the woman who he was trying to get into her apartment to do a search happened to either work with or worked at a local police department. So she just simply called her coworkers or called her homeboys or whatever. And so he was subsequently arrested and subsequently was charged um, and found guilty. That is what I found in his criminal record report. It is fair to note, had I known that he had a criminal history, we never would have even finished date number one. Some things I'm just not going to get involved with if I know from the from the rip. Um, so what does this mean? Again, we've been going over what's the lie. What can you confirm? I can confirm that there was no way that this man ever had a passport to take me to London. When he claimed that he was voting in the election, there's no way that he did because he tried to tell me that he was still a, um, a registered voter in California. And that he did it online. I knew it was a lie. But again, at this point in July, I'm able to confirm that, yeah, you never had a passport. You never voted. The small things that mean something to me. He never did it. He wasn't eligible to. 
So now I know that not only have you, yes, been arrested. Now, what happened as a juvenile, I don't care. But you you have been arrested. You have done some sort of time. And now it explains why you knew your way around the county so well. If you go back to the previous videos, I had mentioned that I was wondering, how do you know your way around here? And the story was his sister used to live in this county and he would come visit when he would fly in from California, when he would go see his parents in Augusta. That was the story. So that explains the criminal history. Um, and I'm also going to take you guys back and remind you when I had to go in for my polygraph and how the polygrapher had asked me, have you, do you know anyone that is a convicted felon that you have relationships with, blah, blah, blah. And remember, I said to him, my husband and I are estranged. I honestly don't know. Fast forward to July where I find out that yes, in fact, on top of everything, I was married to a convicted felon. Had no idea. No idea whatsoever. And it's nothing but the grace of God that I was able, that I was honest with the polygrapher and telling him, look, I, I don't know what's in this man's background. To say that I have no idea who I married is an understatement. It, it is a complete understatement. It's fair to say, well, you only knew him for like two and a half weeks before you quarantined with him. That's fair. And I can understand that and I take responsibility for that. But in the big scheme of things, I had no idea the creature that I was sleeping next to every night. No idea. All right. Part 45. Who the fuck did I marry? So we are now end of July, August time frame. During this time, um, Legion basically disappeared. Remember, I'm still waiting on the final divorce decree to come up. I'm actually waiting for the 30 days to be up so I can file the divorce settlement form. So I'm waiting on that on those 30 days to be up. I'm playing nice with him. I'm being cordial. I've I have done uncovered all kinds of stuff. But just in case he was going to act a fool, I was trying to be cordial. So I had spoken to him on like a Monday and I was trying to get a hold of him for something, but I'm the one that initiated a phone call in the coming days. Never heard from him. Never heard from him at all. He wasn't, his phone was, um, was dead. Um, it was going straight to voicemail and I genuinely was worried a few days turned into a week. By the time I hadn't heard from him in a week, because I knew he was not living anywhere but his car. That I knew that. So this is what happened, y'all. <laughs> um, I first reached out on Facebook. Remember, even though he has told me that he had all these siblings. We know he didn't have all these siblings. But remember, I told y'all I had met the brother in Augusta and I had met the brother in Baltimore. These are people I've met. The brother in Baltimore I talked to on FaceTime. The brother in Augusta, I've actually physically met, hugged, shake hands, all that. Um, so I reached out to on Facebook to people that I remember him talking about all the time. The friend Omar, the brother in Augusta, the brother in Baltimore. Um, another cousin in Augusta. I was doing a search for these people's names, just like, hey, have you heard from Legion? The brother in Augusta told me, no, I haven't heard from him. I've been trying to reach him, um, but the phone's going straight to voicemail. I knew he was living in his car. So my brain was doing everything it could not to go on the deep end. I reached out on Facebook to the brother in Baltimore. And I said, you know, hey, it's gave him my name and I said um have you heard from Legion now mind you the brother in Baltimore and him have talked talked on speakerphone I guess it's important that I make that distinction they have talked on speakerphone so I know that they have talked at least in 2020 so I said to him again according to Legion they talk all the time 
but the, I have heard them on the phone in 2020. So I said, have you talked to him? The brother from Baltimore informs me, no, I ain't talked to him. He owes me money. So I ain't got nothing to say to him. And I said, wait a second, like, he was telling me that y'all are brothers. He was like, man, he's like a brother. But I don't fuck with it. I don't fuck with him because he owes me money. So they had not spoken. This is now July 2021. They had not spoken in well over six months. So all the phone calls, this is what it means, guys. All the phone calls that he had with the brother in Baltimore in 2021 were not real. Then I reached out to the 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 Omar guy, and I said, and I remember the story was is that he and he and him known each other's years since California worked together at the condiment company. I reached out to Omar and said, you know, have you heard from Legion by any chance? Explained who I was. He responds with, and I'll never forget it. He responds with no. I have not heard from him. I have absolutely no contact with him whatsoever. We are not friends. And I would appreciate if you do not reach out to me again about him. The stories I was told was that this dude is supposedly his best friend. Shocking moment. So they had not spoken in years. They're not cool. He does not fool with him. Okay. Went on to the next person, a female cousin I had met. She said, no, um, I have not heard from him. Why would I hear from him? Um, we, we're, we don't really talk. Like, I think she was genuinely weirded out by the fact that I'm reaching out to her out of the blue asking, hey, by any chance, have you talked to my soon to be ex-husband? So what I discovered in the, cause he ended up being gone for two weeks. What I discovered in those two weeks, let me be very clear with the statement I'm getting ready to make. I called every, I reached out to every person I know who apparently has had some form of relationship with him. Either he said that they were friends, they talked on the phone, he said they hung out. Um, the brother in Baltimore, I was told, had been to the house while I was at work. Brother in Baltimore said, no, that, that never happened. I've never been to your house. All these people knew that Legion was a liar. And I think that they all felt bad, with the exception of the Omar guy, felt bad that I was kind of just discovering what they've known for years. In those two weeks, I found out every single person I reached out to, not a single person one of them gave a shit if that man was dead or alive. All of them had the attitude, some even said it, no, I haven't heard from him. I don't care to hear from him. It was as if, it was for me, it was such a sad moment because I discovered this man has no friends. Fuck whatever he has said. I am now able to prove it. He has no friends. There is nobody who is concerned that they have not heard or seen him in over two weeks. Some people months. One guy years. None of them were concerned. So basically what I'm saying is that I discovered he had burned bridges with everyone. Burn bridges with family, burn bridges with so-called friends, burn bridges with fake brothers, fake sisters, fake aunties, uncles, everything. He had burned bridges with everyone. And for me, that was more telling than anything else. Yes, I knew he was a liar. Um, yes, I knew he had made stuff up. I I was genuinely surprised to discover Nobody gave a shit about this man. No one. I, I had never met every single family member, 
But the fact that he was living in his car, the fact that he wasn't bathing and was um, just had disappeared was shocking to me. So where was he for those two weeks? Glad you asked. He had checked himself into a behavioral hospital in Augusta. Why? Not to get help. No. This is July in Georgia. It's hot as hell. It's sweaty. It's damp. It's humid. It's everything. He checked himself into a hospital so he could stop sleeping in his car for two weeks. When he checked himself in, they took his phone. And that's why no one was able to get a hold of him. And by no one, I mean me. He checked himself into a hospital so that he could have a bed for a couple of weeks. That's the type of human being that I was dealing with. Part 46, who the fuck did I marry? So after the whole missing in action debacle where um, he disappeared for a couple of weeks, (laughs) Legion started calling and texting me, telling me that he was ready to come home. Yes, you heard that correct. So apparently someone had told him that legally he did not have to leave the house when I kicked him out because it was a marital home and he had just as much right to be there as I did. So he started harassing and calling the shit out of me. He was calling, I mean, 30 times in one hour. He was fa- he was Facebook Messenger calling me. Let me be clear. Facebook Messenger calling me. He was calling me so much. He was messaging me saying, I'm coming home. I'm going to get some money and drive up from Augusta. You have to let me in the house. Um, It's not fair what you're doing. All this other bullshit. I mean, it was it was nonstop. He would start calling at seven o'clock in the morning. He would not stop calling until 10 o'clock at night. He was calling so much, leaving messages, like I said, just straight up harassing me. So I reached out to attorney friends. I reached out to local law enforcement. Local law enforcement informed me, well, technically he's right because he is still legally your husband. Our divorce had not been finalized at this point. The paperwork had been sent in. I was just waiting on the judge to give me her signature, but it hadn't happened yet. So the law, the local law enforcement did tell me if he comes back, our officers would, would have to let him in the house. You don't have to stay there. They gave me different options. I mean, I was, I was trying everything in the book because he is saying, I'm coming back to the house. I told him, do not come. You were not welcome. I'm not letting you in the house. Again, the locks had been changed. The code had been changed. So I told him, if you come to this house, step foot on this property, I'm calling the police and getting you arrested for trespassing. You should know about that. (sighs) He was adamant. He was adamant that he was allowed back in the home. He didn't know the conversations I had with local law enforcement, but somebody was in his ear telling him, nah, you can go home because she's not allowed to kick you out. Okay, so... I didn't know when he was scheduled to come because he was trying to get the money for the gas to get back to Clayton County. I tried everything I could. Basically, what my options were, were simple. Let him in the home and I can stay in the home, put him in a room, um, just have no dealings with him. But again, I don't want to be under the same roof with him. This is what the local police told me. I could have an officer go room to room and let his body cam film the room to see the condition of the house. And if Legion showed up, I would leave the house. I can go to a family member's home and stay there. This is literally in August, right before my lease is up. So I was already moving. I had already secured another home, um, did exactly what I said I was going to do, moving to Cobb County. So... I just needed a couple of weeks before I vacate the home. So the other option was, you know, again, have the officer film the home with the body camera. That way it shows what the condition of the home is at the time that he moved in. 
So if anything gets messed up, I can sue him. What am I going to sue him for? But nevertheless, um, or the third option is I can stay there with him, make life miserable. So my plan was the option of have them film the home. I was not staying in the same house with him. I didn't care. Also, there was no guarantee. And I told I told the officer this, look, if y'all allow him to stay in this house, I am telling you by tomorrow morning, every utility in this house will be off. He will have no running water. He will have no air condition. This place will feel like a sauna. Officer kind of chuckled and was like, again, ma'am, I, I mean, this is one of those domestic situations. He is allowed in the home. Okay. So again, I had no idea when he was coming. I was on pins and needles every day. I'm seeing the phone ring, like I said, about 30 times every hour. I'm seeing the messages. I'm seeing this. I had reached out to a police captain. I had reached out to the chief of police. I was trying to get all kinds of help. Like it ain't what you know is who you know. So he eventually tells me, I'm going to be there on Wednesday. This is just an example. I'm going to be there on Wednesday. I had been calling a police, uh, excuse me, a police captain who was really gracious, really kind, and was trying to help me because I was like, bro, I just, I just need two weeks and I'm out of this house. And we already knew he legally could not go to the new house. I was trying to see if I could move in early to the new place. The landlord was like, I, I really can't let you. So I felt like I was running out of options. He's saying he's coming. He's saying he's coming. He's adamant he's coming. I guess somebody felt sorry and gave him some gas money so he could drive from Augusta up to Clayton County. So the day before all this goes down, the police captain called me and he informs me <laughs> he informs me that they ran his name through uh, GCIC, which is a database that law enforcement agencies use. Come, turns out, he has a warrant for his arrest. So the police captain says, this changes everything. If he shows up to the house, don't do anything, call us. I, have, I, will, I will have officers to your home and they will simply arrest him. So I know that this is a short part, but I'm going to dedicate the next part to what happened when he showed up to my house. Part 47, who the fuck did I marry? So here's what happened. This was mid-August. Um, went to work, went to work as usual. It actually happened on a Friday. I had to look at the dates. It happened on a Friday. Went to work. Um, still, he was calling me, texting me, messaging me that he was on his way. And so I was a bit on pins and needles all day. I was dreading going home. And that is a horrible feeling to dread to go home. So um, he had called me and said that he was at the house in the driveway I guess he had to use the restroom, so he decided to go to the Walmart up the street to go use the bathroom. I wasn't answering phone calls. I wasn't answering text messages. I simply called the police captain. I said, hey, the, he's saying that he's at the house. The police captain himself drove by the house, but I believe he drove by the house when Legion went to Walmart to use the bathroom. So the police captain was like, I don't see anyone there. But again, if when you get home, if he is there, do not engage. Call us. OK, no problem, because <laughs> I got you on speed dial. So I go home. I'm on the phone with both my mother and my aunt on a three way call. Um, they're both like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, what What do we need to do? Um, I drive into my subdivision. What he did not know was that he had backed into the driveway up against the garage. Normally, I park my car in the garage. But what he didn't know was that at the time, I was driving a fleet car. So I wasn't even in my normal car. And I know that he was waiting to see my car, the Nissan Altima, that he helped get 
um, pull in to the subdivision and then pull in towards my townhome. That didn't happen because I'm in a different car. He didn't recognize it. So when I turned onto my street, as sure as it is hot in Georgia in the summer, that man was sitting in the driveway in his Ford Taurus. Okay. So I live not the, at the time, not far from a cul-de-sac. So when you go straight down, you just turn around the cul-de-sac to come back up. So that's exactly what I did. I went to the corner, turned off so that I can see the house, but he would not have been able to see me. I went ahead and called 911. I was very calm, told them exactly what the captain had told me to say. I was like, my name is, the address is, I need... um police here because my ex-husband is here he is not supposed to be here um and I feel feel as though I am in danger <sighs> she said okay she you know again regular phone call she said we're dispatching police to your home as soon as I hang up I then call the police captain he immediately answers the phone he says we just got the call I'm sending four officers your way okay good get off the phone Call my mom and my aunt back because they were both like, call us back. Um, call them back on three-way. I continue to sit there until I see four officers, four cars pull in and stop just in front of my house. So then I ease up. He gets out the car, I guess, trying to see what's going on. I explain to the officer that walks to my window. I say, you know, this is what's going on. So I was trying to sound extra law enforcement smart. I was like, check him through GCIC. You're going to find that he has a warrant out for his arrest for a violation of probation. And the officer kind of smirked because she was like, we know. We are we already uh, checked GCIC. The captain called us. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Um, so anyway, uh, they tell me to sit in the car. They go up to the window of the car and get him, you know, ask him to step out of the car. He does. When he, when he stepped out the car, I was like, oh my God. I hadn't seen him since the end of June when I met him at the UPS store. And he looked bad then. He was still in the same clothes. When I told you guys when I met him, he was like a size 3X. What got out of the car was easily a medium or large. Easily. That is how, and it makes sense because, you know, he probably wasn't eating. Let's set for somebody gave him $6 for chicken nuggets. But what got out of the car was some was something I didn't even recognize. So he gets out of the car. They arrest him. Um... There was no incident or anything like that. He he was arrested peacefully. They put him in the back seat. My neighbors are all looking like, what is going on? Um, and so the officer comes up to me and she said, you know, he's asking to speak to you. Do you want to speak to him? I said, yeah. So she walks with me. Keep in mind, she's wearing a body cam. So she walks with me to the window. They put the window down. And I and I remember looking at him. I was like, I told you not to come. And he said, I just wanted to get my stuff. I just wanted to get the TV. I said, what TV? The TV that you gave me in the divorce? And he was like, yeah, yeah, that TV. And I says, I said, it's mine. You gave it to me. I have the fucking text messages proving that you gave me the TV. And I'm trying not to scream because the neighbors are all watching. Um, and he was like, I know, I know. I just, I just need it. I just need my stuff. I'm sorry. I'll never bother you again. I'm sorry. And so I look at the officer and I was like, you have me out here with four fucking police cars you have embarrassed me to no end you have made a fool of me and you got the audacity to now be like I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm like fuck you're sorry so the officer was kind of like okay I said I never want to see you again he was like you won't you won't I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm so sorry so I walk off 
the officer is like um, going through the, the, the stuff that was in his wallet. They took it out and put it on the roof of the car. So that's his, I'm sorry, the stuff that was in his pants, like his wallet, his keys, they put it on the roof of the car when they had him get out of the car. And so she's just like, um, you know, I said, did you catch all that on body cam? And she said, yeah. I said, he gave me the TV. And she said, yeah, she's like, we're going to take him in and um, we'll get, we'll have somebody look at him because in her words, she said, he's definitely having a mental episode right now in the back seat." And I just shrugged and I was just like, my God, I, I just said, I just want to be done with him. I just want to be done. I just want to be done. And so she was like, I understand. I, I, I totally get it. So his car is in my driveway. The keys and everything are, um, they took it with them because I guess since it was on him, they took it with them for processing at the jail. Um, I think that's what how that works because I didn't see the wallet or the keys afterwards. So, so at this point, four officers leave. I go into the house. Everything's peaceful and calm. A few minutes later, I go outside to check the mail. What's in the mail? But a letter from the court. I open it up. I go into the house because, again, it's hot. I have my wig on. My, my head is all sweaty and stuff. I'm just angry and um, just angry. That That raised my blood pressure. So I go in the house. I sit on the steps inside the house, and I open up the mail from the judge and it's my final divorce decree and I'm smiling right now but y'all when I got that divorce decree sitting on the stairs I broke down into ugly Oprah tears I broke down it was as if a huge a year worth of weight came off of me I broke down and I mean I wailed I broke down I broke down so I broke down so bad next part all right part 48 who the fuck did I marry so after I finished breaking down wiped my tears and his car is still in the driveway I couldn't park in the driveway so I called the car company. I had called the car company once before um, when he went missing for those two weeks to ask them if they maybe had a tracker on the car and could track it. And the nice gentleman informed me that the tracker had not been giving a signal off for about five months. So he wouldn't really give me details on the car, but obviously the car had not um, the car payment was not being made on that car. It had not been made on that car for quite some time. So I, you know, he and I split in June, but apparently the car payment wasn't made long before June. Can't speak to that, but he still had the car. So um, called the car company. I told them, I understand that y'all are looking for this for a tourist. And the lady said, yes, you know, or you can make a payment. I said, no, y'all can come get it. Here's the address. What When do y'all want to get it? And she said, well, I can have a driver come get it tomorrow morning. I said, no problem. That car will be ready for you to get it tomorrow morning. Um, and so the car was repossessed out of my driveway the next morning, Saturday. The driver was there about 7 o'clock in the morning. He had the master key for the car, cranked it up, drove it, put it on the tow truck, and left. Here's what that now means. When Legion left my house in June, he left with two bags of clothes. Everything else was in my house. At the end of July, or towards the end of July, everything that he had left in my house had been donated to the domestic violence shelter, which means that the only thing that Legion had were the clothes that he had taken with him in the car. When he got arrested in my driveway, all of his clothes were still in the car. And when the car got repossessed Saturday morning, all of the clothes were in there. Which means that when he went to jail, 
whenever he got out, he only got out with keys to a car he no longer had, a wallet with probably no money in it, and the clothes that were on his back. Everything else was gone. Now, now we can fast forward to what happened around August 29th. So I was scheduled to move August 31st. Remember, I'm moving up to Cobb County. We have been checking the court documents. He had a court date scheduled for around August 29th or August 30th. I don't remember the exact date. The court time was supposed to be around nine o'clock in the morning. My mom was watching the court file, the court filings online. And according to her, because I missed it, um, they showed him on the screen because this was still during Zoom. They showed him on the screen and then he was ushered out of out of the court into like a back area and an attorney spoke on his behalf between the time that he had been arrested and the time of the court date I had never in my life slept so good truthfully never slept so good I was officially divorced I had no ties to him there was nothing in the house of his that that excuse me there was nothing of his that was still in the house I felt free so, um, when the court date happened and my mom told me what she saw on the zoom, I was confused. Is he getting out? Is he having to serve time? What's going on? I called the courts. I tried to speak to his attorney. Um, and his attorney had a horrible attitude and was like, why are you calling me? And I informed him. I said, look, I'm a bit afraid of this man. So can you please just tell me if he is being released or is he going to be kept um, or if he is going to be sentenced to a longer jail term? He said, no, he's not being he's not being kept in a longer jail term because the probation, the warrant had expired. So when the police arrested him, yes, it was a valid arrest, but the warrant had expired. So I believe the warrant had expired like six months earlier, but of course it wasn't put in the system. <sighs> Which means that if the court date is August 29th, he's going to be released August 29th or August 30th. I'm moving August 31st. So my mom was just like, please just spend the night at your aunt's house. Like just spend the night at your aunt's house, then go back to the house during the day the movers will be there and then just move. So that's exactly what I did because there was concern that he would get out of jail angry and catch an Uber with no money and come back to the house either for retaliation or because he's just in a fucking manic mode. And so that's where he went. Um, I really didn't want to take any chances. It's just that simple. I did not want to take any chances. I knew that at that point, legally, the law's on my side. Y'all are divorced. You have no reason to be at this home. I knew that that's what the police would say. But I wasn't 100% sure because truthfully speaking, I did not know this man. We can make all the jokes we want. I did not know this man. I thought I knew him but you never really know a pathological liar. So needless to say, he got released August 30th. I went to my aunt's house for the night. August 31st, I went back to the house. The movers were there. They packed me up and we got out of there so quick. I think they packed me up in about two hours. I honestly told them there is extra money in this. If you guys can get me packed up, meaning loaded up onto the truck because everything was packed. But I explained to them, this is a domestic situation. I need you guys to move quickly. When I moved out of that house on August 31st, anything that Legion touched, I got rid of. I sold the furniture. I sold <laughs> dining room tables. I donated plates, glasses. I When I tell you I moved out and I started over. I completely purged my life. Completely started over. I mean, I didn't, I was not willing 
to take a single item into my new home that reminded me of him. From the dishes in the kitchen to the towels in the linen closet. When I tell you Amazon and Ross were my best friends, I mean they were my best friends because I could not fathom moving into a new home, a new space with anything that reminded me of him. I sold the bed, got a new bed. Um, if he had bought me clothes, I got rid of them. If he bought me shoes and purses, okay, I kind of kept the heels, but um, everything else I got rid of. So I completely purged my life, completely. Started over from the bottom in terms of just the move. Um, I ha I could not take any piece of him with me. Could not. Part 49, who the fuck did I marry? So after the whole, I moved and um, I started over, basically, completely started over. So there was a period of time where different people had reached out to me, um, people who knew him. Apparently, he was still trying to find a couch to sleep on. And so one guy in particular had reached out to me because I guess Legion had asked him if he could come and stay with him and his family um, because he was homeless and had nowhere to go. And so he had lied and told the guy, because again, he's a liar. So he had lied and told the guy that, you know, I had kicked him out or divorced. Um, I had taken all his money. And so that's why he's homeless. So the gentleman simply was reaching out to me on Facebook to confirm what is actually true. And he and I talked because he ended up calling me. He and I talked for a while. Very respectful, really nice guy, um, very compassionate. And so I told him. I was like, I, I said, we are divorced. So I have nothing to do with him. I said, I wouldn't bring him in my house with my family if I were you. But that's just me. Um, and so the guy was like, lady, you know, he didn't say lady, but he was like, lady, you dodged a bullet. He was like, I know you may not see it now, my sister, but you dodged a bullet. You dodged a bullet big time. And so, you know, just in talking to him, he was very encouraging. Like, it sounds like you got a good head on your shoulders. It sounds like you a good woman. And no, he was not flirting at all. He was like, it sounds like you a good woman. And I really hope this does not mess you up. Like, don't let him mess you up. Don't let him like diminish your shine kind of thing. And I appreciate that. I did because at that time, again, had moved into my new place. 2021 was the worst year I ever had. I'm not saying that so that 2024 can be like, hold my beer. Um, but 2021 was a dark year. Started out married, end of the year, divorced. End of the year with COVID and divorced. Um, and that period of time, that August, September time, I felt like I was just walking around like a numb woman. I didn't know if I was coming or going. I didn't know what I was. I didn't know what to do because I felt like I had just been through hell. And it was a period of time where I had to sit down and I had to really, really deal with some stuff that I just simply was not ready to deal with. Things that I... I had to come to grips with that I really wasn't ready to come to grips with. So fast forward all this time, get to December of 2021. Yes, this is where the story does end. Um, get to December of 2021. I am out sick with COVID. I'm not at work. I get a phone call from my coworker telling me that Legion has called our job looking for me and was trying to get information to um trying to get information on how to reach me 
Yes, I had already changed my number. Again, I had already moved, but he knew where I worked. So apparently he had called trying to find me. And the person that answered the phone was like, we're not going to give you that information. So he, he said, well, can you ask her to give me a call? I'm just trying to get a hold of her so I can get my stuff. The stuff he's talking about are those tote bags from July. So he was calling, calling, calling. Um, and it was it was a problem. He was trying to reach out to me on Facebook. He was trying to reach out to family members on Facebook, trying to get me to call him so that he could make arrangements to come get his stuff. The devil is a lie. So my friend Tracy, who came to my rescue again, um, my, my friend Tracy was like, okay, here's what you're going to do. She said, you're going to send him a message and you are going to say these exact words. I sent him a, a text message. She said, and she told me you're going to send a text message because it's going to be time stamped. And basically the text message says, I do not have your stuff. I, I did not have your stuff. Um, I have nothing that belongs to you. If you continue to, you were disrupting um, the work of my job by calling and asking for me. We have no contact with each other. I will send you a copy of the divorce decree that shows whatever is in your possession you own and whatever is in my possession I own. If you contact me directly or indirectly ever again, I will get a restraining order on you. Now, for those of you who are watching this in 2024, and you're probably like, wow, she's dramatic. Please understand that what I just said, I meant. I mean that. If you ever try to contact me directly or indirectly, I will get a restraining order. I have it in writing. I've always had it in writing. And if I need to rewrite it again in 2024, I will because the it, the the boundaries still stand. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the last time I had any contact whatsoever with my pathologically lying ex-husband. Part 50. Who the fuck did I marry? So, the aftermath there are some realizations I had to come to um, after the divorce and everything had passed. One, Legion never loved me. He never loved me. He doesn't love himself, so I know he didn't love me. Number two, he didn't even like me. He watched me get excited about things that he knew I was not going to get and not even just the possession stuff like of course we know I was exci- I was excited to be the woman whose husband is like I'm taking my wife to London I was excited to be the woman whose husband was like yeah I bought my wife a brand new BMW X5 you have to understand as all the jokes that we make about the BMW It was the time and effort that he spent in taking me to dealerships and being sure to put me in the car and test drive the car and, you know, oh, I can, I can see you in this. I like this for you. It seems safe. It was the, it was the effort to really make me believe that he was going to get this just, just for him to fuck with me. The effort in taking me to all these homes to see my face light up as a woman who grew up on welfare, to be able to walk into these four and five bedroom homes knowing that he didn't have any money to buy it. Imagine if he had just been honest and said, hey, I I like in my free time to go to open houses and just see how the other people live. Imagine if he had just said that versus wasting not only my time, but wasting the time of the realtors. 
who did nothing wrong. There's a level of cruelty to my ex-husband that I had never experienced before. And God knows I pray I never experience it again. That's the word that I that comes to mind when I think of him. He is cruel to and and it wasn't just me. He did it to the ex-wife. So, do I trust? No. No. I trust the people who were in my life before him. If we were friends or if we were in a relationship or whatever and I knew you before him, um, I trust you explicitly. But if you're somebody I just met, I don't trust you. I I don't. There's no point in me getting on here and saying and making it seem like, oh, I'm so strong. I'm so brave. I struggle big time. Because on one hand, I want to like someone. On the other hand, I'm immediately thinking, what if it's a repeat? And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I can't go through that again. I can't. Um, Every single thing in our relationship was a lie. It took me a while to realize every single day this man lied to me every single day he lied to me every conversation he had was a lie I will never know how much he lied to me I'll never know I and I have made my peace with it I will never know how deep it really truly goes I only know what I experienced and I only know what God allowed me to see. But I'm willing to bet that there's a lot I still don't know. When people say, oh, you dodged a bullet, like you just, and I've read some, I've read a lot of the comments on this and people have sent me a lot of the comments. And so I need to make one thing very clear. I am fully aware I dodged a bullet. I am so grateful to my God that I did not have that man's child. I'm sorry if that offends some of you, but it's the truth. I'm grateful that we didn't buy a house and that I'm not financially tied to him in any way, shape, or form. But I am also grateful for the fact that there are things about my ex-husband that I discovered in terms of how he is when it comes to other women. And I'm grateful that God has kept me and protected me. That's all I'm going to say. So when I started out making this series and and I made the decision to tell my story, my motive was I just want to help one person. If there is a woman out there who's like, God, you know, I want to be married and I met this guy and something don't seem right, but, you know, maybe it's not that bad. My advice is, honey, just go ahead and do your research because I can honestly tell you being single sucks, okay? Uh, In my opinion, sometimes it sucks, but being married to the wrong person is a type of hell no one should have to go through. You should not have to be married to someone that does not like you. You should not have to be married to someone that doesn't even love you. And I know what that is like. I know what it's like to be told, hey babe, you know I love you. And yet, I swear I think that man sat back in the recliner with his WWE Championship Roman Reigns belt and laughed his ass off at me every day. Like, damn, she really believed it. Ha, 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 ha. I do. I really do think that. Um, My radar was broken because I am an intelligent woman. And I know that I know better. And I still sometimes ask myself, how the fuck did you let this happen? How did you let this be your story? all because 
at the time, I wanted it to be my turn. And I, and I hoped it was my turn. And when people say, well, what do you mean by that? I just meant, we all see it, whether it's social media or real life, we all see where the woman has, she done been through some stuff, but she finally met someone who appreciates, loves, and respects her. And it is a beautiful thing. I had hoped that when I met him, it was my turn for that. And instead, instead of being obedient, I wanted to be right and I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And the cost of that decision was heavy. The toll of reliving this whole scenario was heavy. It, it, it was. I'm almost surprised at how hard it was to actually finish this playlist. Not because I couldn't remember stuff. I probably remember way more details than what I actually put out. But it's just the fact that it's like I'm reminding myself, how did you let this happen? So, <sighs> therapy is real. Therapy helps. Stella Rosa Black helps too. Um, and yes, I will one day get to London. I will get my dark blue BMW X5 with a cognac interior. Um, I believe I will get those things. Just got to get it, them a different route. So, thank you all for being on the playlist of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I promise I will go live and I will let you all know when I go live so that we can have a wine night full of questions and answers. Thank you for watching. Okay, you guys, so we have finally finished the um, installments of the TikTok series, Who the F Did I Marry? This is parts 41 through 50. I'm so glad, glad that it is almost over after I give my final thoughts on this. So I'm just going to run through all of these parts real quick and then my final thoughts. So part 41, the brother confirmed the dad never went to church. Um, he was not a pastor. The mom did not retire as a teacher. Um, the dad was a truck driver, but was also a correctional officer. Um, Legion said Chris had a daughter named Egypt that was furthest from the truth. So she don't know who she bought the gifts for for, for the little girl's shoes. Um, she never did a joint account. I'm glad about that because I was wondering, did she, um, actually go through with it? So she confirmed that she never did the, um, joint account because he did not show her all of his accounts. And at that time, she just knew that he did not, those things didn't exist. She found a second phone of his that was a prepaid phone. And in the phone, she found some photos that he deleted and um, she found out that those bank accounts were not real. They were screenshots off of Google. I told y'all that I knew it. I knew it. He was taking Google images and posting them as his own. But I still feel like she still miss certain things even when he was showing her that because I wouldn't have been looking I mean I would have been looking at his dollar amount but I would have been looking at the name as well so I don't know how he cropped it or whatever the case may be but clearly he made it to where she did not suspect the thing the so-called aunt called um her to ask about what happened between her and Legion and she told him what happened and she um, was wondering because he told her that they had the baby, it was a boy, and he wanted to come and stay with her because he ain't had nowhere to go since she had put him out. And um, the auntie brought up the TPO from the first wife, which is the uh, woman that was on the obituary that was married to Legion at that time. So she told her about the TPO. They both got it on each other. They both was physical. Um, when she decided to meet up with him or talk to him, can't remember which one, he was still lying. 
she asked him, why did you marry me? And his answer was, because I had to. Because I knew that you weren't going to be my a girlfriend for no longer than a year. I, I knew that I had to marry you because of woo, woo, woo. So pretty much insinuated, I, I knew I had to get you because you was too easy to get. And I couldn't let that go back. You know, like some real fucked up shit like that. Now, in the last um, installment, I mentioned something about him um, impersonating an officer. I got my um, parts mixed up. You got, you got. So part 44, she talked about the criminal history, the trespass, and suspended license, impersonating an officer. He went so far as to pretend that he was an officer um, working for a um, apartment complex or whatever, and he was asking for drugs and trying to pat people down and he tried to go into this one woman's apartment building but not knowing that she had ties to the police to the police department so he ended up getting arrested so part 45 she did a little bit more um calling around asking about him and a lot of people saying they don't fuck with him um they really want to whoop his ass because he's lying or he owed him money and it just didn't look good, and it shows that he literally burnt all his bridges. He didn't have any family. He didn't have any friends. He was literally alone. Part 46, when he reached out to her and told her that he was ready to come home because legally she could not put him out because her home was considered the marital home. And I'm like, oh, shit. This is not going to go good. This is not going to go good because now he has grounds to come back and it might get toxic, it might get physical, violent, all types of things was running through my mind. So I know that her mind was just going crazy. Part 47. He ended up coming to the house, but he did not know that he had a warm out for his rest. She knew that because she called the chief because she was scared of him coming. They came they arrested him and he was not in a good state of mind. He was not looking good. Although he had been, oh, I forgot that he had checked himself into a, a rehab facility or a hospital for a couple of weeks just so that he would have a place to sleep. So although he was at this place, on the same day that he got arrested, she ended up getting her divorce um, decree in the mail. So that was some amazing news for her. I'm glad that she got it. Now she could start moving on and really um, picking up the pieces and just starting anew, you know, get rid of everything that reminded her of him and just start over. Because, listen, I wouldn't want nothing else of my ex who took me through this. I wouldn't want no ties nowhere in my house, my home, my phone, my car, like nothing. I don't even want the pair of drawers that he may have bought me. I'll, I'll get rid of everything, which is exactly what she did. So everything that he signed off on and left her, she donated to the domestic violence shelter. So that was a good thing. Um, the car that he came, um, drove into the house that he got from the dealer when they were married. They had been looking for that car for five months. They couldn't track that car for five months. That man took that tracker off or something he took off because they could not find that car for five months. And he did not pay on the car because how could he? He didn't have any money. But I'm just like really trying to figure out though, y'all. Like how was he sustaining? Was he getting unemployment like that? Or was there, or did the unemployment end? Like, I'm really trying to figure out how was he even able to get that car? I, I'm not understanding. And how was he able to pay her bills? Because I'm sure in Georgia, I know their rent is a little bit higher than ours here in Detroit. So I'm pretty sure he was paying a pretty penny for her rent every month. I don't know. Okay, I didn't um, summarize part 49. 50 is just her revisiting everything and she's giving a conclusion and she's talking about, you know, what she have learned and how she's planning to move forward. And in the way she was giving the answer to her question of who the F did I marry? And I hope that her answer 
is the answer that she needed. Because, baby, listen. If I don't know nothing else about this whole situation and about who this man is, I know that he is an unstable, habitual liar, a habitual mass manipulator. And I, I want to say he bipolar. I want He got to have some type of mental illness, like personality disorder or something like that. Because I, I can't grasp the fact that one day he's, wearing a three X and then weeks later or months later, he has a, a bad knee and all of a sudden he just dropped down and weight drastically. Like that's unheard of for somebody that's supposed to be healthy. So I don't know y'all, maybe I'm thinking too much into it's actually something wrong with him besides mental it could just be mental and he's having an episode where maybe he didn't take his medication or something and he's spiraling downhill. I don't know. But all in all, I am happy that she has found some type of peace, some type of normalcy. And I do pray and hope that whoever has watched this if you're going through the same thing, take heed and leave now while you still have your sanity. And the biggest lesson of this for me, the takeaway for me is when it comes to marriage and family and stuff like that, well, pretty much anything that you want in your life, that's going to fulfill your life. You must have God at the head of it. You can't say that you would church this, church that, and you you stand on God and you your faith is strong. And then as soon as a man come your way or you see that this man got all this type of money, that your morals goes out the window. Because now you have taken the job away from God to lead you and to bring your man, your husband to you, if you're going to do God's job for him, then what do you need him for? He don't need you to put you together with the person that you feel you're supposed to be with. That Let him do that. And I can't stress it enough. God is not going to bless no mess. God is not going to bless drama. He is not going to bless foolishness he's not gonna bless you being naive he's not gonna bless that because all the signs were there they were there so air everybody who wants the same thing that she has been looking for make sure that you keep god in the midst of all that and wait on him and wait on him because Truly, only he knows who is equally yoked for you, who is right for you. Otherwise, we wouldn't be asking God to send us a husband or send us a wife, right? He knows who he has for you. And in her in her situation, I also feel that God was not sending her anybody at this moment because he seen that she was not ready spiritually. She was not ready spiritually. And this is what happened, happened to her. She, and the devil creeped in. All it takes is a little crack for the devil to creep in. And once he in, he's in. Now, I don't know what her profile is on these dating websites that she was on. To where she hooked up with Legion. But y'all got to be careful about these webs. These dating sites. You got to be careful about these dating sites. I understand that some of us women. We just got to be with somebody. We got to feel wanted. We got to. If we must. But a lot of times. These 
dating sites and it depends on which ones you go to there are nothing but men who are literally coming out of jail who got some type of criminal background and this is what they do this is their playground is to go on these dating sites and hook up with these women who seem to be desperate and if you're not careful you're going to end up in the same situation as Risa Tisa, the one who told this, this story, this series, and a host of other females. And some of them, some of y'all might not even make it, unfortunately, because some individuals, some men out there just are not right mentally. It's okay to wait. It's okay to be single for as long as you need to be single. Because listen, I'd rather be single for as long as it takes than to be with somebody that is going to drain me mentally, physically, emotionally. It's going to give me a hard time. Who's going to stress me out? I would rather be single. And y'all feel... Some y'all females out there, y'all need to take heed to that. It's okay. You do not have to have a man. You don't have to have one. And if you feel like you just have to have one, then you have to do your background checks. You have to do your due diligence for your protection. You have to. This is, this is how it is in this day and time. We have to go an extra mile. Just to make sure that people are who they say they are. And it's not just for women for the men, but men for the women as well. Like, it goes both ways. But nine times out of ten, it's mainly the women that have to look out for the men. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. And you got to, you have to listen to your intuition. You have to tap into that. If you have never tapped into your intuition, you might want to try to... Figure out how to do that because that intuition is not going to lie. That intuition will save your ass time and time again if you listen. If you ain't listening, you're going to be on a path to destruction and fuck ups and all types of stuff that you don't want to be in. Listen. To your intuition. Listen to what your, your your mind is telling you. Your gut is telling you. I promise y'all that it's not going to lead you astray when it comes to, you know, figuring out if this person is legit or not. If you are a person who feeds off of energy. Like me, I feed off of energy. And the moment that I feel like, I don't know, I don't get a good vibe from you, it's a wrap. It is a wrap. And I cannot tell you how many times I have actually dodged bullets because I listened to my intuition. I really wish that she would have listened to her intuition the first time that that man lied about the first house. So when she went to um, mention, she just thought it was her turn. He wa She wanted it to be her turn because she see, you know, other people living happy lives and, you know, celebrities living happy and she just wanted it to be her turn. That's not up for you to determine, in my opinion. That's not up for you to determine if you want it to be real, if you want it to be authentic, if you want it to be of the right thing. Like if you want it to be based off God being the head, like you can't just say, oh, I wanted, I wanted it to be my turn. So I made it happen. And that was the biggest mistake that she could have ever done. You wanted it to be your turn when it was not your turn. That's why I said she was not ready spiritually. 
for that equally yoked husband that she's been praying about. She wasn't ready because she decided to move before God. She decided to say, you know what, God, you taking too long. I want what I want right now. And so therefore, <laughs> you got what you got. And you almost snapped. Yeah. But. I am just glad that she is doing better. And I think I seen in another part or another video or whatever she made that she. Ended up going to London or she was going to London. So kudos to her for that. And I'm also going to say this, ladies, find your self-worth, find your self-esteem, because if you don't have these two things, you are a easy target for the fuck shit, the manipulation. You, you're an easy target for all of that. And men sense that. Men who are up to no good since the desperation. If you have your self-esteem and your self-worth, a lot of these men can't come to you on no bullshit. Period. So get in tune with yourself, ladies, and, and, and big yourself up. Don't look for a man to do that for you. Can't nobody big yourself up better than you can. And once you get to the point where you love you some you, you not going to take no shit from nobody. So I just wanted to end it with that. I'm glad that this series is over. I hope there is no more series from anybody else on TikTok or any other platform that got parts like this. Because this was massive. This was a lot. But I enjoyed it for the content that it was and that I was able to provide to you guys, especially those who do not have a TikTok account. I purposely did this for you guys. So I hope that you guys enjoy everything. Please keep put your comments down in the comment section. Let's talk about it. Um, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, all those good things. I am ready to talk about something new and um yeah that's it you guys i'll chat it up with you guys on the next episode later